75 Park Avenue. Not just another New York office building, but in the words of architectural leaders, a singular landmark with a loop and aristocratic qualities not likely to be often repeated in any city anywhere. A new standard of architectural quality. Out of the dreams of one industrialist, this great new edifice came into being. He had the vision of something special for his company's headquarters, a skyscraper that would become a landmark. The Park Avenue site had been bought, 60,000 square feet of choice real estate. Then in the chill of a February day, giant shovels began chewing at rock and mud. It takes big men, big machines, to make big dreams come true, and close teamwork. Out of this humble origin of rock, mud, and water will soar a great bronze tower. These are the very beginnings of the change, the transformation from a famous residential building to an address of business distinction designed by world-renowned architects Mies van der Rohe and Philip Johnson. And even at this beginning point, curious eyes look on as the realization of the dream follows a pattern. First, demolition then construction. From its very origins, any major skyscraper makes an impact on business and life in its community. Yes, even on the nation. As the Park Avenue site was made ready, Bethlehem Steel Mills were playing their part, turning out 25 million pounds of steel for the framework, enough steel to form a ribbon around Manhattan Island. Into the framework was built a human quality, the quality of neighborliness. As each girder was formed, all the necessary riveting was done right at the mills. This sped the construction, but it also spared the neighborhood the deafening chatter of the riveters' guns. The Seagram Building pioneered in dozens of innovations for office building design. One major advance, specially devised pinkish-gray heat and glare-resistant glass. Windows of this glass are easier on the eyes of those who inhabit the office building. But innovations add responsibility, the undeniable need for testing. The skyscraper's special walls of glass and metal were subjected to the beating of man-made hurricanes with 120 mile an hour winds. They passed the tests. In the practical laboratory that is now the finished building, the quest for new materials and modern ways to use standard materials was unending. In the search for a special dignity and design, age-old bronze was chosen. Other New York skyscrapers wear faces of aluminum, steel, glass. But this building, sheathed in bronze, is unique. accomplish the desired effect required over three million pounds of bronze. Machines cut the panels to exact size, but men, skilled craftsmen, must fit them into their proper places in which there will be no leeway. The precise plates are only half the story. Coupled with them to carry out the spectacular new design are narrow vertical columns. Construction men speak of them as mullions. These columns have two architectural tasks to perform. They separate the floor to ceiling windows, and also they multiply the vertical lines rising majestically from the glass-walled ground floor to the top of the building. Here is accent, unrestricted, pure upward movement. It's said the building is a beautifully tooled masterpiece of metal and glass. The I-beam mullions were extruded, or forced through dies, in lengths of 26 feet, Thus, they were the longest bronze sections ever extruded. In use, they project from the building to cast short shadows in patterns that create a rich, three-dimensional effect. Here again, the human element, a painstaking check by man of the work of a machine. The long, hard look of the knowing and experienced eye. The precise rap of the hammer all the things that go to spell quality. Old world skill also had its part to contribute to the maturing skyscraper. 3,000 miles away, 
in the mountains of northern Italy. Marble is hewn from its natural setting to adorn the new building. Coordinating men, material, and equipment is another of the constant jobs when a vision is being turned into reality. Near the construction site as building progresses, implementers of the dream meet regularly to dovetail their various activities, assign work crews, make certain everything goes smoothly, and to keep an eager eye on production schedules. As the months roll by, the structure takes on form. Floor by floor, the building rises. It's not long before steel riggers are operating at dizzying heights. As the frame of the 38-story building nears completion, these men juggle girders hundreds of feet in the air. Time is right for a smoke, but oh, the place. This becomes a sort of game of pitch and catch, with steel girders as the ball. Only real pros last any length of time in this league. It's at this stage in the construction of most skyscrapers that those who live and work in the immediate area usually have had it. The constant rat-a-tat-tat of the riveters guns, that is. Not so with this building. Its giant skeleton is locked together by high tensile bolts, 190,000 of them. It's one of the tallest bolted buildings in the world. This innovation eliminated the risks of hot rivets, and the costly and thoughtful venture and neighborliness brought this building one of its many awards, a citation from the New York Committee for a Quiet City. Already, this building is taking its place as one of New York's mile posts, and critics the world over hail the building for its overall concept, details, equipment. The building's concrete spine helps the structure brush off more easily those often strong winds at its great height. Meanwhile, on Manhattan's always busy streets, the flow of material continues. It's time like a railroad schedule, yet arranged to cause the city no extra traffic congestion. With the framework finished, the building is now ready to receive its carefully fashioned facade. The precise panels are eased into place. They snuggle together as closely as pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Over the years, the facade is designed to deepen in tone, but not to change. It will withstand every kind of weather, even hold out steadfastly against the dirt and soot of a busy city. On the ground, above the ground, and below the ground, the job is pressing toward conclusion. Yesterday, a massive steel skeleton stood revealed to a watching world. Today, another floor rises and still another, reaching 38 stories into the sky. Who can resist the view from this vantage point? Only a quick look, however, for there's work to be done. From the upper reaches of the building, an open elevator conveys workmen swiftly downward to ground level and below where the nerve center of the skyscraper also nears completion. Two stories below ground where not long ago only a cavern of rock and mud existed, the power plant of the skyscraper, a maze of tubes, ducts, and cables, and generators. Here is generated enough heat to keep the plaza in the heart of the city free of snow and ice, enough heat to melt 500 tons of ice a day. Here also, much of the air conditioning and air purifying equipment. An electrostatic filter system magnetically removes dirt from the air circulated throughout the 38 stories. 
it becomes one of the cleanest and healthiest buildings in the world. Aside from the vast amount of equipment housed here, the basement of the building holds an ultra-modern garage. It has every mechanical aid to safe and speedy parking for the public. Into the bustling port of New York comes a shipment of Italian marble for the half-acre plaza fronting the building and its lobby and corridors. From the mountains of northern Italy, 3,000 miles across the sea, this material came to lend its own particular beauty to the dream now rapidly coming true. But still another skillful step is required here. The great blocks of marble must be sliced and polished. Then, like everything else, cut to exact size. Then the delicate finishing touches. This fine marble covers 46,000 square feet within the building and another 17,000 square feet of its spacious plaza. Each of the specially designed window plates weighs 109 pounds. The floor to ceiling lobby window plates weigh 500 pounds each. Now the building itself is complete. It remains only for those final painstaking details that go into design, right down to the last doorknob, the last mail chute. Now at last, the vision of industrialist Samuel Bronfman and his family becomes reality. The dream comes true. And as the building takes its place in the profile of New York, a new neighbor sets up house across the street. The Seagram Building has won architectural acclaim as the most beautiful tower ever to rise on Manhattan's skyline. In the airy and open fountain and tree-lined plaza, they sacrificed rentable space to beauty and quiet reflection. The New York Museum of Modern Art said it best illustrates how sacrificing building space in crowded areas enhances the architectural beauty of the community. This building is the first New York skyscraper to be fully illuminated at night when the refreshing bath of sunlight on bronze gives way to a regal mixture of black and gold. By day and by night, this skyscraper stands as a great event of 20th century architecture, a dream come true.